I'm going to show you how to implement a bubble sort in Visual Basic.net. I'll start with a simple implementation and then I'll make some enhancements to make it more flexible and to make it more efficient. The assumption is that you've watched my other two videos on the bubble sort and you now have some idea of how the algorithm works. So I have a simple Windows Forms application here and you can see I've already placed a button on the form. So let's write some code for it. Before I begin, I need an array variable with some random data in it that I can sort. It'll be an array of five elements numbered from 0 to 4. Each element will contain an integer value. Let's initialize those elements. A little bit of copying and pasting speeded up that process for me. Now I'm going to write my bubble sort code here, but before I write that code, I'm just going to write a little routine to output the contents of the array. By the way, there's no need for me to declare the variable i if I only want to use it within this loop. It has what's called block level scope. So let's give this a try. And of course, no sorting has taken place yet. The data is coming out in its original order. Now let's write the bubble sort. I'm going to start by writing a sort routine that will only sort an array of this size. We can make a change to that later. I'm going to start with the inner loop. Now you should remember from the algorithm that the inner loop scans across the array comparing pairs of items and swapping if necessary. If there are five items in the list, then we need to compare four pairs of items. So my inner loop will run four times. But because the array is zero based, we're counting from naught to three. Naught, one, two, three. That's four times. To compare a pair of items, I write In other words, if an item given by index number i is bigger than an item given by index number i plus 1, the next one along, then we're going to do a swap. And I need a temporary variable to do this. If a particular item is bigger than the item next door, swap them around. I need to perform this scan four times. If there are five items in the array, we do it five minus one times. Why? Well, think about it. If there were only two items in the original array, and we put one of them in the right place, then the remaining one must now be in the right place. So however many items there are in the list, it's that many times minus one that we need to scan through. So let's nest this loop inside another loop. Now, just for clarity, I like to add something to the end of these next statements. Just to make it a little bit clearer, which next goes with which for. And that's it. A simple bubble sort. Let's give it a whirl. Yeah, those items are in order. It's worked nicely. Now there is a bit of an issue with this particular bubble sort. It will only work with an array of five items. I want it to work with an array of any number of items. So I'm just going to remove some of this hard coding here and here. Instead of saying for i equals naught to three, I'm going to say for i equals naught to the length of the array minus two. And here, instead of saying for i pass equals 1 to 4, it'll be for i pass equals 1 to the length of the array minus 1. A very simple adjustment, but this bubble sort will now work with an array of any size. I need to just make the same change down here to my output routine. Right, let's just make sure that works with my original array. Fantastic. 
and let's see if it works with a bigger array. Twice as much data, still in a random order, and my bubble sort is dealing with it nicely. The next thing I want to do is to take this bubble sort routine and put it into a separate program, which I can call when I need to. So I'm going to write a new program here called, guess what, bubble sort. And I'm going to set it up so that you can pass it an array variable when you call it. In other words, you can pass a parameter. So this program is expecting to be fed an array of integers when it's called. It's the brackets here which say that this parameter is an array variable rather than a regular variable. As far as my bubble sort routine is concerned, the array will be called array to sort. It doesn't really matter what I call this. So let's take this code and move it into my new program. Now I just need to make a couple of adjustments. This program calls the array array to sort. So I'm just going to replace the name my array with array to sort. And there it is, a separate bubble sort procedure waiting to be called. Well, let's give it a call. And that's working just fine. I'm just going to make a slight modification to the way I'm specifying the size of the array within my for loops. Instead of saying array.length minus 1, I could do this. UBound array to sort. And because the UBound of an array is the highest index number, for example with an array of 10 items it's 9, there's no need for me to subtract 1. I can do the same here as well. Instead of subtracting 2 this time, I can just subtract 1. That does exactly the same thing. Let's just make sure. Indeed it does. So it's up to you whether you want to say array.length minus 1 here, or UBound of the array. Take your pick. I like UBound because I can use exactly the same code in VBA, 